perfect. So I have negative 4 fifths minus 7 eighths. Um, so when doing a problem like this, I don't really need these parentheses here. Um, but again, the first thing that I'm, I need to be able to do, and, and I, can, um, I can rewrite this as, a, as an addition problem. Right? You could say also add a negative, which would be you know, the exact same thing. Um, but the main important thing, it doesn't matter if we're adding or subtracting, we have to make sure we have common denominators. All right? So when we're looking at finding, determining common denominators, what we need to do is are what we call the least common denominators. A lot of times, an easy way to find a common denominator is just multiply them. 8 times 5, right? And so you determine is, you know, is 40, obviously, is a common denominator. But is that the least common denominator? So to double check that, I always like to do just list the multiples of your largest denominator. So 8. Is 5 a common denominator of 8? Or is, does 5 divide evenly into 8? No. 16? No. 24? No. 32? No. 40? Yes. So guess what? The LCD is 40. So I always like to write that onto the side so I don't forget it. So I say LCD is 40. So what that means is I need to make both of these denominators 40. So on the left side, I need to multiply 5 by 8. But ladies and gentlemen, if you multiply a fraction just on the denominator, you change its value. Think of 1 half. If you multiply 1 half by 3 on the bottom, you now have 1 sixth. Is 1 half and 1 sixth the same? No. no. So you have to multiply it on the top and the bottom, which produces what we call equivalent fractions. Because think about 1 half. If you multiply by 3 over 3, that becomes now 3 sixths. Is 3 sixths equivalent to 1 half? Yes. So always make sure you multiply on the top and the bottom. Same thing over here. To get to 40, I need to multiply by 5. To produce an equivalent fraction, I'll multiply by 5 over 5. So now, when multiplying fractions, what we simply do, oh, I'm losing everything, is multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So 8 times 4 is going to be, um, so, eight times, so 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 5 is 40. And obviously, that's a positive times a negative, so that's a negative. And then I have minus 7 times 5, which is 35, over 40. So now as I subtract these, again, what you guys can think of this is add, adding a negative, right? Change it to an addition problem. Um, and that a lot of times thinks about, makes it helpful. Is you, have, you owe somebody money, plus you owe somebody else money, right? So what you're simply doing is you're going to add these up, and it's still going to be negative. So negative 32 plus negative 35 is going to be a negative 67 over 40. And that's it. Anybody have any questions on that? Okay. So just remember, guys, on the fractions part, I know it's a lot more work than everything else. 